Well, that's interesting. And I'm not gonna lie, this kind of feels like cheating. Hey there, my name is Soundrack, and welcome back to my Terraria version 1.4 Journey's End Beginner's Guide series. This episode is all about the matriarch of the jungle hive, the Queen Bee, and we'll cover the boss in all difficulties, including fight mechanics and gear recommendations. Timestamps are down in the description if you're hunting for a specific topic, as are links to my Discord server where you're always welcome to hop in and ask any questions you might have. Now let's get to it! One of the things I love about Terraria, particularly in pre-hard mode, is that the game really doesn't force you to do stuff in any particular order. And this is true of exploring the jungle and taking out its pre-hard mode boss, the Queen Bee. Generally speaking, the mobs in the jungle are quite a bit harder than the mobs on the surface or regular cavern level, so you'll typically want to hold off on exploring the jungle until you've got either Tier 3 or Tier 4 or crafted equipment or better, though you can certainly go there earlier if you've got the skills to do so. Regardless of when you go for the Queen though, you'll probably want to fight the underground jungle's hornet mobs at least long enough to first get the Bazaar accessory which has a 1% chance to drop from all Hornet variants. I'll talk about this accessory more in a bit, but simply put, it protects you from the poison debuff, which is one of the biggest dangers of the jungle in general, and the queen bee in particular, especially on expert or master mode. As for spawning the queen, as with most pre-hard mode bosses, there are two methods to make the matriarch manifest. The first is by finding a beehive and hitting its larva with anything. Beehives are randomly scattered throughout the underground jungle, and per the wiki, small or medium worlds will generally have between 6 to 8 of them, and there's usually 11 to 16 hives in large worlds. Hives don't always have a larva though, and it is possible to find two or more in the same hive. And these things are seriously super fragile, so take care in the hives, especially with projectiles and summoned minions if you aren't ready to take on the queen. The other way to summon the boss is using the Abomination item anywhere within the jungle biome. It is crafted with a stinger which drops from the spiked jungle slimes and any hornet, 5 hive blocks from a beehive, a bottled honey, and 5 honey blocks which are created when water and honey come into contact with each other. The Abomination does not require any crafting station, so you can make it anywhere but it cannot be used at all outside of the jungle, and for reasons I'll talk about in a bit, you generally only want to use it down in the underground jungle. Before we get to the queen bee's attacks, let's talk a little bit about poison. Many enemies in the jungle can give you this debuff, and the queen bee and, on expert in master mode, her summoned baby bees are no exception. This debuff causes you to lose 2 health per second, and although the wiki says it prevents health regeneration, that's not quite accurate. Health regeneration is a pretty complex topic, so I won't go into it in detail other than to say that being poisoned greatly reduces your total rate of health regeneration, but doesn't negate it entirely. On classic difficulty, the poison isn't a big deal, as only the queen bee's stinger attack can poison you, and even then it only has a 33% chance to do so. But on Expert and Master mode, every attack in the fight, including the baby bees, will poison you. So on these higher difficulty levels, do yourself a huge favor and equip the Bazaar when fighting this boss as it will help you to live longer. Once summoned, the Queen Bee will appear and immediately do her charge attack three times, moving horizontally from side to side. This is her most damaging attack and deals 31 damage on Classic difficulty, 54 damage on Expert, and a massive 81 damage on Master mode. She'll also do the charge attack periodically throughout the fight, and telegraphs it by moving off to your side immediately before charging. It's pretty easy to avoid simply by jumping over her, grappling, or jumping to a higher platform level, or dropping down to a lower level as she starts to charge. Since she always goes in a straight line, you can increase your reaction time by moving away from her as she lines up for each charge. On higher difficulties, the speed of the charge is faster, and as her health goes down, she'll do more of them in a row and from not as far away, making them much harder to avoid. On these higher difficulties, you can use your Shield of Cthulhu and dash into her charge, which will deal damage to her and avoid damage to you. 
However, I don't recommend using this towards the end of the fight, as it can decrease the time until the next charge, and your shield might still be on cooldown. Instead, use the shield to increase your distance in the opposite direction of her charge, which will give you more reaction time to avoid the next one. Using a circular movement pattern works very well when her charges get rapid. Another great mobility item to avoid the charges is the mount from King Slime, as its faster movement, both up or down, will allow you to more easily get out of her way. When she isn't charging, the queen will randomly alternate between one of two other attack patterns. In the first, she will try to hover a ways up above you while firing her stingers. These things deal 22 damage on Classic, 44 on Expert, and 66 on Master Mode. And as noted earlier, on Classic difficulty, the stinger only has a 33% chance to inflict the poison debuff. But on Expert and Master Mode, all attacks will give you the debuff, and the Stinger attack has the longest poison duration of all. Note that although the Queen can pass through solid blocks, her Stingers cannot. So in order to fire them, she'll need to stay at least partially below any ceiling your arena might have. You can use this to your advantage to keep her in range of your weapon of choice. Also, she's not the best aim with these things, and even if you're standing right underneath her, she'll probably miss the majority of the time. On Expert and Master Mode, she has an increased rate of fire though, and as she gets lower on health, that rate of fire will go up, meaning the damage will also start to add up. Generally speaking, moving back and forth between the walls of your arena is the best way to avoid most of the stingers, as she'll stop firing when she overshoots you and goes through the walls of your arena. The other attack pattern is when she will hold still and fire out her baby bees. The number of bees she'll release is somewhat variable and will be either 6, 12, or 18, and a mix of small bees and bigger bees. For the most part, these things are more annoying than anything, and so long as you have enough defense, their damage output will be pretty negligible. But added benefit, these guys can drop healing hearts and mana stars to help you stay topped off during the fight. And when she's summoning the beast, she will hold still, allowing you to get some good damage in on her. Also, on Expert and Master Mode, her defense goes up substantially as she gets closer to being defeated. So low damage weapons will make the end of the fight even harder, as they'll start hitting for even less per hit. This can somewhat be offset by using the Shark Tooth Necklace, which bypasses some of her defense. You want to fight her in the underground jungle, as taking her above the surface in the jungle will make her mad, and she'll move and attack faster than normal. She's also a bit unusual, in that if you were to leave the jungle for any reason, including warping back to base, she will follow you all the way across the map, where she'll be really mad. So keep her in the jungle, as there is no benefit to fighting her when she's enraged. Getting sent home by dying will of course cause her to despawn though. As for a fighting arena, you generally don't need an extensive setup for fighting the queen. Especially on classic difficulty, most hives are big enough, you'll do just fine if you put in a couple of levels of platforms for avoiding her charges. Though if you're new to the fight or on higher difficulties, you might want to either hollow out the beehive a bit more, or find an open area nearby that you can use. The good news is that honey is plentiful in the hives, so you'll have no shortage of this health restoring buff, but you may also want to add a campfire, heart lantern, and other arena buffs as needed. See my guide on this topic for more information. As for gear recommendations, there are a ton of options that can be used to down this boss, but in addition to the bazaar to negate the poison debuff, good defense and health regeneration will also help you to outlast the boss and make the fight a whole lot easier. Around 40 defense should be more than enough in classic and expert difficulty, and 45 or more will really help in master mode. This can easily be done by wearing evil or armor or better, along with an iron skin potion and maybe a few accessories re-rolled to warding. In fact, with enough defense and regen, there's a cheese method to beat the boss that works on all difficulties. Other than that, you'll definitely want a grappling hook and either fledgling wings, a cloud in the bottle, and its various balloon upgrades, or, as mentioned earlier, the slimy saddle will do just fine for avoiding the charges. Melee characters can use just about anything to dethrone the jungle matriarch on classic and expert difficulty so long as you have some regen and good defense, and even short range weapons like swords and maces can be used quite effectively. Just make sure you have platform running about 6 or 7 blocks below a nice flat ceiling, 
And you can just stand below her when she's firing her stingers or summoning her bees and otherwise get up next to her when able to do so. Platinum or gold armor is sufficient on classic, as is platinum or a gold broadsword, though higher level items are recommended if they're available. If you prefer a little more range, a yo-yo with a white string is a decent option, and the jungle yo-yo works great for this boss, though you'll likely want a mace of some sort to take out the baby bees. Likewise, the jungle's thorn chakra works decently well on classic difficulty, but tends to pump out lower DPS on expert or master mode and doesn't do well against hordes of baby bees. On master mode, I would probably recommend beelining for molten armor though, and a fiery greatsword will make short work of the queen. And if you've been to the dungeon already, a cobalt or obsidian shield will help to keep you from bouncing around when getting hit. For all you rangers out there, you can pretty much use any ranged weapon you have at this stage of the game on classic difficulty, though I'm personally not a fan of bows for this fight as you'll give yourself carpal tunnel syndrome with all the clicking. For this reason, my recommendation on all difficulties would be either the mini shark, the musket if you have a corruption world, or the boomstick. The mini shark and musket both have auto fire which eliminates all the clicking, and although the boomstick doesn't, its multiple shots per click make it highly effective even on master mode. Meteor shot works best for bullets as they have some piercing and will bounce once if you miss. Baby bees can be hard to hit with guns though, so you might want to keep a mace or sword on hand to clear them out from time to time. Note that on expert or master mode, the mini shark will struggle towards the end of the fight when the queen's defense goes up. You'll definitely want to have a shark tooth necklace to give yourself some armor piercing, and be sure to bring plenty of ammunition, and ideally an ammo box and ammo reservation potions. Mages likewise have a couple of options at this stage of the game. Higher tier gem staffs, such as the emerald, amber, ruby, or diamond staff work decently well on all difficulties, though the emerald staff will likely struggle on master mode. If you've farmed the demons of the underworld and gotten the demon scythe spellbook, that is a great option. All of these weapons pair nicely with the jungle armor mage set, which is pretty easy to craft from common jungle materials. Another good option is the space gun with full meteor armor, which also works well on all difficulties, though, as with the ranger's mini shark, a shark tooth necklace will help to boost its damage toward the ends of the fight. And if you've already farmed Skeletron, his Book of Skulls is a fantastic weapon for downing the queen, and there are a number of options from the dungeon that also work pretty well. Be sure to have mana regeneration potions though, as all of these higher tier options are pretty mana hungry, and of course a mana power potion will help the fight to go faster. With the right gear, summoners have a remarkably easy time with this boss. If you're fighting the queen early, you'll probably want a flink's robe, flink's staff, feral claws, and a snapthorn whip crafted from jungle materials. Fish up the jungle's variegated lardfish to make some summoner potions for additional minions, and this combo will take out the queen quite fast on classic and expert difficulties and decently well on master mode. If you've been to the underworld and gotten the hellforge, then the obsidian armor set is amazing for this fight, though if you're using imps as minions, you'll want to keep the queen a bit further below the ceiling, otherwise they won't be able to target her. And if you've already plundered the dungeon, you'll have an extra minion from the bewitching table and can toggle back and forth between the snap thorn and spinal tap whips to pump out even more DPS, using the snap thorn once every three seconds to get its speed buff. As for loot, the queen bee drops a number of fun treasures, so you'll likely want to farm her to get all the goodies. Many of these items summon baby bees that will fight for your cause. On an expert or mask mode, you can use the queen's accessory, the hive pack, to cause half of your friendly bees to be a bigger, more deadly variant. For melee users, the beekeeper sword is a fairly decent bee generator that is also an ingredient for the endgame zenith. Rangers get the bee's knees bow that shoots bees when using wooden arrows that will spawn baby bees when they hit their target or any solid block. The magic bee gun just keeps it simple and fires out baby bees and creates quite a swarm really fast. She doesn't drop anything directly for summoners, but the bee wax from the queen can be used to craft the summoner boosting bee armor as well as the hornet staff. This set is the best pre hard mode set for boosting your minions, but overall pales in comparison to the obsidian set. Likewise, the hornet minions are fairly decent, but generally aren't as good as the imps from the underworld. The queen also drops the honeycomb accessory, which releases baby bees when you're hit and gives you a 5 second honey bath for some added health regeneration. 
It can be upgraded into a couple of other items, including the Stinger Necklace when combined with the Shark Tooth Necklace, and in hard mode can be turned into the Bee Cloak or a Sweetheart Necklace. For vanity items, the Queen drops a Bee Costume, a Bee Hat, the Hive Wand for placing Hive Blocks wherever you want, and the Nectar item that summons a Vanity Hornet Pet. On Master Mode, she can also drop Sparkling Honey for a pretty cute little Baby Bee Vanity Pet, and she drops the honeyed goggles, which gives you a bee mount, but it only flies for 10 seconds before getting tired and overall isn't all that useful. And last but not least, the queen drops bee nades, which can also be crafted from the queen bee's wax for regular grenades, and as you'll see in my wall of flesh guide, these explosives can be used quite effectively for entering hard mode. Once you've downed the queen, I highly recommend using her loot to farm her some more, as all of her drops work decently well against her. Anyone up for a bee civil war? Now before we wrap up, I mentioned earlier that there is a cheese method for taking down the queen bee, and you might have noticed it in effect earlier in the video. The trick revolves around the queen's baby bees, and the fact that the game gives you a brief period of invulnerability whenever you take damage from something. With good armor and health regeneration, the damage from the baby bees isn't enough to make your health go down, so all you have to do is get a bunch of the babies on you, stick yourself to a platform with your grappling hook, and then the low but constant damage from the baby bees will make you completely invulnerable to all damage from the queen herself. You've got to be careful though about what weapon you use, as some will take out the baby bees that are right on top of you. I haven't tested every weapon, but gem staffs, maces, and whips definitely don't work. Some swords do, including broadswords and the knight's edge, but only if you're facing to the left, while other swords like the fiery greatswords and knight's bane don't work at all. Guns seem to work fine, as does the space gun, but beyond that, I'll let you experiment to find out what all can be used with this method. And no, in case you're wondering, these baby bees cannot be used to cheese other bosses. Because unfortunately, other mobs will kill the baby bees if they come into contact with them. So sorry, no cheesing mech bosses or even the moon lord with the queen's baby bees. But that's it for today. Be sure to hit the like button if you enjoyed the video, and do let me know down in the comments what your favorite setup is for taking down the queen of the jungle. And I'll see you in the next one. Cheers!